and welcome everybody. Uh, we're here again. Today I wanted to do my top 11 favorite books that I own in my personal library. This does not include my favorite books that I don't own that I've read from the library or elsewhere that I don't own in my personal library. This is my third time trying to film this. Um, got interrupted once and I was almost finished filming it but I didn't have enough room on my SD card so please bear with me for using my iPad again. Uh, sorry for the raw footage and everything like that. Um, I should be able to edit my videos very very shortly and please bear with me I'm so sorry. <laughs> Without further ado I'm going to give you the list of my favorite standalone novels that I own in my library. Uh, this does not include series or books with continuations and such. This is just solely books that stand on their own. Um, there are a few books in here that have some sequels or second novels coming out to pair with them but that's not until like another year or two so I'll get started so number 11 of my favorite books I read this in high school um, it still holds a place in my heart um, and it is My Sister's Keeper by Jodi Bacall uh, it's a story about a girl is conceived in the lab solely to be a blood transfusion or bone marrow or whatever purpose she needs to be used for to help her older sister battle her, uh, her leukemia. Um, and she basically has the same genetic makeup as her older sister. Um, so she questions, you know, she questions her, her morality and, um, yeah, she sues her parents and it's just, it's really an eye opener. It really, really makes you think on, um, you know, it just makes you think and it rips your heart out. It was adapted into a film. I have the, the film cover here and uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. And I suggest if you haven't picked it up yet, I suggest you do. Oh, and a little tidbit, I also read this in high school. Uh, some of these books in here I've read in high school or while I was in college. Um, so yeah, number 11. This one, the next one is number 10. And this is William Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream. I read this in high school and also in college. It is my favorite play or comedy by William Shakespeare. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't read it already, I think you should. Even though it's kind of written in Old English and all that stuff. <laughs> really funny. Has separate plot lines within the book. Um, a guy gets turned into an ass, or in other words, a donkey. And it's just mischievous and a lot of fun, a lot of action and yeah, I just laughed a lot at this book, so. William Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream. And I have number nine, John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. It's a very, very short book. I read this in high school, and uh, I think everybody's read it in high school at this point. Um, it's just another moral book, you know. It still holds a place in my heart. Uh, 
even to this day. And yeah, it made me tear up. And I still remember pretty much almost everything about this book. I reread it from time to time, you know, just because why not? <laughs> I own it and I love this edition. It's pretty cool. I've highlighted it a little bit. And yeah, John Five Mice of Mice and Men. The next book we got is another thing uh, from a famous author, somewhat. Um, we have The Host by Stephanie Meyer. And it's Stephanie Meyer's book after the Twilight series. Um, a lot of people said she couldn't write. But this book here is a masterpiece. It's a hefty book at... It's hefty, it's 619 pages, but holy smokes, it's totally worth it. The world is beautiful, the characters are phenomenal, and it was adapted into a film. Love the film, but the book just holds a place in my heart, so. And if you haven't read it already, I strongly suggest you do. And, uh, yeah, The Host. I'm realizing more as I'm looking at my list of books. A lot of these books have been adapted into film, but I try to read them before the film comes out or they've been around before the film. So on here, I got The Time Traveler's Wife. We follow the story of Claire and Henry. Um, Henry is a time traveler, they fall in love, and, um, you just have to read it. Uh, I'm a sucker for romance novels, and I'm a sucker for anything that deals with time travel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a heartbreaking novel, though. It crushed me. I cried. I laughed. I was happy. But there was moments I was pissed off, too. Uh, don't get me wrong. That I got a array of emotions from this book. Um, the novelization is great. And also, the film adaption is beautiful. Um, of course, in film adaptions, they leave out like a bunch of things. But pick this up if you haven't. And I also found out we're going to get a sequel in 2019 about Alba. So, I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Yay! Another, surprise, surprise, another book that got turned into a film, uh, except the film is loosely, loosely based on this book here. Uh, I kind of, when I first read this, I watched the movie and I enjoyed the movie much more because I'm a sucker for Mandy Moore and Ching West, but... This is a little bit different. Um, I finished this book in a day. Like, I picked it up in first period in high school, and I finished it by the time I was in fifth period. It was that good. <laughs> and, uh, holy smokes. If you haven't picked up A Walk to Remember, I think you should. You should. But, prepare to cry. Uh, just prepare to cry beautiful romance book. One of the cliches I hate about Nicholas Sparks books is a character kind of always dies in the novel. Uh, I guess with great romance you gotta have a death or something but yeah pick this up if you haven't. Uh, a Walk to Remember. And I just love the autumn artwork on this. This is beautiful. So yeah. A Walk to Remember. Well that was numbered this is number five or wait not five but number <laughs> number six I'm sorry I'm sorry I apologize again for the raw footage and everything I'll, I'll try to do better next time I'm sorry <laughs> You're gonna be annoyed again, but this book was turned into a novel too. I mean, this book 
was turned into a movie also. Yay! <laughs> Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Got hair on me. Oops. Holy smokes. The references and the world was just so fun. I enjoyed this book very, very much. I love, like I said, I love the references. Um, I, I hear that it's supposed to get a sequel. I don't know when, but I went, I loved reading this and I even saw the film back when it came out in March of this year, I believe. And I loved it. If you haven't picked it up yet, I suggest you do. And also, I got the pop figures. I got Artemis. And I got Parzival. Yay! So, you can tell I love that book very much. So, that's Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, and I've gotten to the final four. Uh, so these books are like my four favorite books of all time. Uh, I of course have copies in my library because they're they really made an impression on me, and I will keep them in my library forever. So I'm gonna show you number four, and this is The Perfect Storm. Uh, I'll read you the little blurb on the back. Um, October 1991. It was the perfect storm. A tempest that may happen only once in a century. An oyster created by so rare a combination of factors that could not possibly have been worse. Creating waves 10 stories high and winds of 120 miles per hour. The storm whipped the sea to inconceivable levels few people on earth have ever witnessed. Few except the six-man crew of the Andrea Gale, a commercial fishing boat, tragically headed towards its hellish center. Holy smokes. <laughs> if you haven't watched many of my videos, if you're new to my channel, you'll quickly learn I am a sucker for a good novel that deals with meteorology in some fact shape or form um but this book i hold very dear to my heart it was also created into a movie with george clooney uh george clooney in it and a few other people as well um also i was alive during this time a baby or an infant actually and it happened right in the same like living space i was living in like right now but yeah it happened on the east coast and all that stuff but holy smokes suspenseful it there's some tragedy in it it's quick read um i probably nobody's gonna read this anyway so i don't even know why i'm mentioning it but it's number four on my list of favorite books so i just wanted to share it with you guys and uh you're looking forward to a good read um pick this up number three we got nicholas sparks the guardian not adapted into a film oddly enough um this is my favorite nicholas sparks novel nicholas sparks is actually one of my favorite authors even though i find his books sometimes to be rather repetitive in some ways but this is like the first Nicholas Sparks book that I really really got into and I really enjoyed and just look at this beautiful cover I'm a sucker for beautiful sunsets um I'll give you the premise um basically a woman is widowed or widowed depending on I think widow -er, widow -er. her husband dies a few weeks before Christmas or whatever and she or her late husband gives her a dog and then the story ensues like four years later she has the dog it's a great Dane 
name is Sinner, not like Sinner, S-I-N-N-E-R, like S in S-I-N-G-E-R, Sinner. Um, and Shanette, or stuff happens. I'm not going to spoil anything, um, but it's a great book. You'll see what happens if you read it. Um, it's absolutely great. Read this in a day and a half. The only reason why it took me so long was because I was busy getting my culinary arts degree, so I couldn't really focus much of my time on it. But any free time I had, I, I ravaged this book, and holy smokes, it was good. And I also picked it up from a thrift store, so that's why it's got this pretty library covering on it. But yeah, The Guardian. It was absolutely phenomenal. And uh, pick it up if you haven't already, okay? Okay. We're getting to the last two books on my list. Uh, I read these books this year, and... They've made an impression on me as a person, and I I can't say any more about that, but um, I will show you them. And book number two on my favorite books list of books that I own, and basically my favorite books in general, um, we have A Life in Parts by Ryan Cranstein. As you can see behind me, I have a Breaking Bad poster. <laughs> and this is the life story of one of my favorite, or my favorite, uh, not author, actor. And he wrote a book about his life. And holy smokes, I finished this within no more than two days. I listened to it on audiobook. It was phenomenal. And he also read... The book that he wrote and the stories of his life how he from basically childhood to some of his recent roles and there's a lot of content about Breaking Bad and just his life in general and I absolutely adored this book uh, some people might not like an autobiography by somebody but I absolutely love this. Um, this memoir was beautiful and it really just, I felt more connected to Brian Cranstein than I already did. Um, and just look at this gorgeous back. Look at that. <laughs> so yeah, I picked this up. I absolutely loved it and if you're looking for a good autobiography with with a nice like flow and tone, I would pick up a life in parts if you haven't already. Um <laughs> Yeah, I just I could reread this again and again and again. Like I was just like reading like the first I picked this up after I read it and I just started reading and I got like 60 pages in without even any effort because it was just, it, it just sucked me in all over again. Um, but yeah, A Life in Parts by Baron Cranstein. And yeah, also I'm not sponsoring any of these books. These are just my honest opinions and yeah, A Life in Parts. And we're getting to book number one. And... I will do a favorite series list, but this is my favorite standalone book. It might be, like, my favorite book of all time, other than, like, the Harry Potter series. But we got The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. Uh, let me just say something about this book. Holy crap. <laughs> This is absolutely wonderful. Uh, it's suspenseful. It's a wonderful thriller. I can pretty much predict how some books go usually because I've read that much books. I could usually, like I said, I could predict anything. 
and I kind of get bored sometimes. Sometimes I lose my interest halfway through books. But this, I, this book blew me away. Let's just say it blew me away. I finished this for Biannual Bibliothon. I picked up this book because I, I got tired and tired of waiting to read this book because the Overdrive app for my library was taking like three months to rent this book because it was, it was constantly in cycling of people borrowing it from the library. So I finally picked it up from Barnes and Noble and it has a slow start. I was kind of like, eh, no, I don't know if I want to pick this up, but I'm glad I did. And holy smokes, <laughs> the twists and turns in this novel were perfect. And even my mom read it. She finished it in a day also. Um, I'd love to see this have a film adaption. That would be perfection, but I think it's still out to it hasn't been out long enough but boy it's gained a following and that ending though that ending this this book made me laugh it made me cry and it just made me be utterly shocked the whole entire time I read this so the woman in the window is my favorite standalone book as of July 2018, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I think it's going to be on the top. So that is my list of favorite books and thank you for watching. Again, I apologize about the crappy quality and the raw material. Um, my dr hopes is to have a SD card soon to be able to film and edit. I apologize again. And have a good night everybody and I'll see you in my next video. Speaking of next videos, I'm planning on starting a series on my YouTube where I'm going to read a lot of different novels and books and I'm going to cook the characters favorite foods because why not? <laughs> And I have so far two or three videos planned out. Uh, I just have to get the recipes together. I have to finish typing them out so you could have the recipes for yourself. And then I have to buy the ingredients and everything. And uh, so far, the three recipes that I have picked out are. Emmy and Oliver's burritos from the book, the potato guacamole burritos with the chips and the green drink. Then I have Katniss's favorite dish from the whole book, which is uh, the lamb stew. I have the recipe written down also. And lastly, I have Jane Sinner's um, cake from Nice Try Jane Sinner. And, uh, I plan to cook for you guys and then you can make your characters favorite dishes when when I post the videos and I'm I totally love suggestions and everything like that and uh, have a good night everybody bye